We made it to Nantucket and I am super excited to share with you what we've got going on. We've got a lot going on this week. My mom and my Aunt Susan are almost here and we are excited to spend some family time with them, show them around, let them enjoy our lifestyle on the boat, but at the same time, show you guys a little bit about Nantucket and all the beautiful sights. So New England is known for all the abundance of seafood it produces. So we're talking lobsters and mussels and clams and bay scallops and sea scallops and just a whole oysters. bunch of seafood. Oysters, a lot of uh, hard shell crustaceans yeah. that I don't particularly like. I'm gonna give them a try this time because you know, when in Rome, we're gonna talk more about that later and do a little of the ocean to table lifestyle here in Nantucket. But first, we're going on the wave bus here, which is the Nantucket transportation, public transportation. We're gonna take you on a little adventure. It's gonna be a lot of fun and we're gonna take you to a really cool place. So let's go. Nineteen sixty Continental Mark V. Nineteen sixty Continental Mark V. Very cool. <laughs> we have made it to Sconset, which was a little town settled three centuries ago. We've traveled eight miles east, so we're on the east side of Nantucket now. And this place, from what I've read, is going to be so charming. It used to be a whaling outpost and was really built around a lookout tower, so people could. Uh, whale watch basically uh, because whaling used to be prime business in Nantucket in the 1800s. It actually was the whaling capital of the world. So we're gonna go check it out and there's a Sconset bluff walk that apparently goes right by the water. It's gonna be cool. I'm excited. Before we get going, we're gonna grab a little snack and this whole market seems to be the perfect place to do that. spent $38 in that little market on a sandwich, two waters, a pack of cookies, and some Cheetos. I don't know if we can hang with the Nantucketers. <laughs> Definitely not. We're balling on a budget here. Guys, I don't know what's cooler than a house built in 1770. This little cottage is pre-revolutionary, which is so freaking cool. Okay, so this siding's new. So, wait, show everyone on this side here. So, of course, traditional New England fashion, these homes have the shingle lap siding, right? And I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe it is a uh, cypress, or not a cypress, cedar. I believe it's cedar. Uh, I'll have to fact check myself later. Mm -hmm. But um, as it ages, it gets this beautiful, just gray tent to it. But if you can look over here on this side, this was just replaced. I'm sure this is not a new home. Um, my guess is that just the siding has been replaced here. Um, and including the window that still has the stickers up on it. <laughs> but never, nevertheless, really, really cool. And over time, that will turn to that beautiful gray color that we all know and, and see on all the other houses. Four wheel drives on the island is essential because you get to go actually out on the beach when you have a four wheel drive and a little pass. So we see a lot of Jeeps as the one that just passed by. But the true Nantucket like style is this here Land Rover. Now we're seeing all kinds of Land Rovers on the island. This one's probably one of the older ones we've seen. It's so it cool. It is in mint condition. It looks absolutely amazing. 
We're right here at the beginning of the Sconset Bluff Walk at the end of Front Street. And yeah, what's really cool so. is this whole path goes right behind all of these houses, which it almost seems okay. invading, dare I say, to walk in people's backyards. But this trail will go all the way to the Sand Kitty Lighthouse. And what's really neat is back in the 1800s, a Nantucket resident and developer actually deeded into all the plots here a public right of way because he knew that the Sconset Bluff Walk would be something that would be really important to Sconset as the years went by. So it's really neat. This is a public right of way that just goes all the way to the lighthouse. The ice cream queen. <laughs> I'm gonna read this one. And All then right. I'll put it back in the little library in Clayton, Georgia, in a couple of weeks. Perfect. That will be go. fun. Yeah. yeah. Love it. It is absolutely incredible how beautiful these properties are. I mean, there is not a hedge out of place, a weed out of place, really anything out of place. <laughs> it is just pure, pristine beauty. And then just overlooking the water. I can't imagine what this must have been like in the 1800s when this was at the height of its whaling business like it was. I mean, what would that be like? Being in one of these houses and then you spot a whale and then what, do you ring a bell and like call in the troops and say, let's go get him? Like what, what that must have been like? It's just really cool to think about history and really how this place really got on the map because that's how it got on the map. It was the whaling capital of the world. They would kill whales and harvest them for whale oil, which they would then make candles and that would then light homes and yeah, it's wild. It's cool. It's really cool. What you doing? Check this out. Well guys, we made it to San Katie Lighthouse. It is so gorgeous here. Totally worth the walk along the Sconset Bluff Walk. It was a pretty long walk, to be honest. <laughs> yes, longer than we expected, but totally worth it. And with that, we are gonna say goodnight so we could spend the rest of the night enjoying time with our family. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for fun adventure. Hey guys, we're super excited to share we now have a merch store. Head over to shoptheadventurecruise.com to check it out. We're really excited about these designs and we hope you love them as much as we do. Your purchase supports our journey, which we greatly appreciate. We couldn't do this without viewers like you. Wake up so Still in softly let the wind torment still to break of day. Well, guys, today we're going clamming. We're doing one of the most New England things there is to do. <laughs> It's a little chilly, a little breezy, but that's not going to stop us. We're going to hope to get out here and find some clams so tonight we can make a delicious dinner. What are we making? Clam chowder. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that one. Woohoo! I got one! 
<laughs> Never been clamming before. <laughs> We're gonna make some chowder. Woohoo, some chowder. You gotta right. say it with an accent. <laughs> chowder. I'm making some chowder. Chow chowder. 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 Aha! Yep. Yeah. That one. Woohoo! There you go. Look at that. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Coming to you. There. Nice catch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll show you my crab. show you my crab. He's just a little guy. While everyone's getting warm showers, I've decided to go ahead and take care of step number one of making our dinner tonight. I have the clams in a pot of a little bit of water to steam them. And well, we got one good pot full. So after an awesome afternoon at the Whaling Museum here in Nantucket, we are back to the boat and I am whipping up some clam soup. We're not gonna quite call it clam chowder because I'm uh, adding a few more ingredients than the traditional New England clam chowder would consist of. You wanna come over here and see it? It's starting to smell good. We got some vegetables and some garlic and jalapenos and some potatoes and onions in there. So, like I said, it's more of a clam soup. All right, guys, well, we are just about done. I just added the half and half to give it that cream base that, you know, clam chowder is supposed to have. Now, as I mentioned, Kind of cheating a little bit, making my own style, which isn't that every like chowder or soup. Anyways, let's just uh, give it a first little test taste here. Mmm, that is perfection. I have one, but I can't reel. Help me, take the camera. Don't drop it. It's my neck. Is Hold it on. filming? Yeah, yeah, it's filming. It's filming. <laughs> He probably got off. Oh, I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Come on. Come on. Oh, he's pulling. He's a big boy. Watch out. He's going to spray you. Oh, my goodness. There's no way you got that on camera, the way you were swinging around. Sorry. It's out of focus. Oh, How cool. He's so pretty. You got one. You got one. Heck yeah. <laughs> Let me see it. Oh, he's spitting on me. <laughs> there you go, you got some squid. <laughs> what do you think, huh? What about fish? You want a fish? You don't know what to think, huh? Guys, I feel like... <laughs> A little kid in the candy store, seriously. This is so much fun, like it's so simple, but it's so much fun. There's so many. He like inked all over the place, look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. How cool, I've never seen one out of water before.
Good, morning. how are you? We're at the head of the harbor here in Nantucket and we're doing some farming today, but specifically aquaculture farming, right? Is that right? Is that cool aquaculture farming? Yeah. Yeah. And we are here with Simon, who is the one of the what? One of six? Six farmers. Six yeah. farmers here in Nantucket growing oysters. oysters. So we're gonna find out all about it. Here we go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> when an oyster is in there, it gets windy, they'll move about knock each other around and keep and, clean and keep keeps clean and also prunes the growth off so okay. um, by that i mean is an oyster grows an oyster grows out from this edge sure you can see that's that was actually a period of no wind and they, they massive growth okay. going on yep so when they're getting knocked around like this they'll prune that growth off and it forces them to cut and become like this and, and a nice a pretty nice and that's oyster. the aesthetic, aesthetic you actually want that's right aesthetic for restaurants you didn't have this system and you just piled them in a bag and didn't separate them out and keep them the densities low. They grow into each other, become shoehorns, they find yeah. any space they can grow into. So is there a proper way to eat an oyster? Chew it a couple of times. Chew it a couple of times. And don't put sauce on it. Don't put sauce on it. No, no. You can't taste the oysters. <laughs> you chew it, then you then you go hit with the ocean. And you'll feel like some. Oh man. Is it good? It's so good. <laughs> so, so salty and just yes. Oh, it's good. So, and make it look pretty. <laughs> you have to eat it. You have to. Oh wait, it just blew off! Oh, are you right. kidding me? Right. You just, just throw it away. It. No, throw it away. I'll give you another one. Just throw it to go. <laughs> you did that I've on only purpose. I've only tried an oyster one time, and it was in Fort Myers, <laughs> Florida, and it was terrible. Okay, why? Why? Because it was was it I don't, the texture? It's the texture for me. Okay, so chew them. If you just swallow it, it could be anything. <laughs> if you chew it. You get, you'll find this more texture. But you have to slurp it. But it just looks like a lukey. <laughs> you just chew it. There's actually texture in it. And that's the problem. When you just swallow it, it's, it becomes a texture issue. It's like horrible. Don't, don't touch it. Just put it in there. A couple of chews and then go for it. You ready? Simon. No, you can do it. <laughs> do I put the juice in there too? Can yeah, I, can I yeah, yeah. No, it. the juice is part of it for it's sure. It. Guys. It's going to be great. No, don't think you're thinking too hard. What are you, what are, what are you grabbing it? It just looks like a big you're, you're booger. Psych, you're psyching yourself out. People pay five dollars for those things in this island. Chew it a little. Now you can swallow it. Was that better? <laughs> Wait, are you serious right now? <laughs> Did she swallow it? You can spit it out. Ah! What? Hang on. Are you oh. kidding me? This is all. This is all. Over. Guys, this is how it's gonna be. I cannot believe this. <laughs> what I told is you, I don't this? Like... Is, you realize and people pay four to five dollars a piece for these little well, succulents. You know what that means? I'm a cheap date. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's the texture. Not I can't. In, not in Nantucket are you a cheap. Oh date. my gosh. Oh. It's so good. It's <laughs> so good. Look at that, man. Oh my gosh. Simon said, gave me this one, said mm -hmm. this is the perfect oyster. We've got a nice shell, clean shell, and a nice plump oyster right in the middle. Oh my gosh. Right. You, I didn't come here just so you could feed me, but I, I, I appreciate <laughs> it. I mean, I'll take it. Like, guys, this is, it doesn't get any better than this. Wow up and down the east coast. It's truly the Maine, same oyster. Maine all the way around to the Gulf. It's the same oyster, the eastern oyster. Eastern oyster, okay. So what makes, everyone talks about, you know, blue point oysters or, you know, okay, the different so, breeds, right? So, like even here in Nantucket on the, on the menu, yeah, I see- three different types, yeah. Okay. Four different types. Oysters take from their environment, their flavor on sure. them, okay? And the shape of them, you know, we have this system where we're floating in Just them. like, so just like any other farming, If you right? grow them on the bottom, there'll be a different shape and they get flavor from whatever they're growing on or around. Sure. And if you don't put cocktail sauce or mignonette sauce on them, you can actually taste them. Also. Okay. You eat it absolutely naked. So it's blind taste, you blind can tell taste, the difference between all three if, types. Yeah, I mean, okay. and you can educate yourself like wine, you can educate yourself to taste the substance itself. Sure. But, you know, so these would be considered briny with a sweet finish. Let's put that on. There you got these little bungees here. Pull over. Okay, so 
Like that, right? The one in the middle, yeah. And then I'll just that. And then back in the water. Back in the water and just floating right so there. Those are nice and clean. If I left this for three weeks out here, it would look like a giant chia pet. Look like the bottom of your boat. <laughs> if you've been an anchor for three months, you know what I mean? A giant chia pet. <laughs> So it's really important to keep your, the gear here as clean as possible. In fact, yeah, the barge behind us here is just a pressure washing barge all by itself. They have a huge pressure washer on it. They take all the traps or, or the cages and put them up there one at a time and pressure wash them, keep them clean because the saying is, repeat more it. Flow. More flow, more grow, more grow equals more dough. <laughs> Last night we had a great time catching these squids, so now I'm going to clean them. And inside the squid there is a little, that one's hard to get right now, but there's this little like, almost feels like plastic, but it's this clear, I don't even know, like vertebrae if you will, that you've got to pull out of them. And of course we get rid of, get rid of the heads. A lot of people like the tentacles, uh, include, I don't mind them. so. Uh, we're going to keep the, uh, the tentacles to some extent. There's a little beak inside of them, so you clean that out. And then I'm just taking, they have two really long tentacles, taking those off and then just keeping that. So you just grab this little vertebrae and just kind of pinch it and pull. And there it is. So that's a little plastic thing. It's completely clear. <laughs> and like I said, it, it literally feels like plastic, but it's not. We're just going to throw that into the wind. Then I'm going to come through here and just chunk it up like you would normally for at, find at a restaurant. There it is. Goes into our bowl. Stay up in there with your finger. Get rid of that vertebrae. Come on. There it is. Look how big that is. <laughs> that is just massive. Crazy. It's like a feather, literally. And it literally feels like plastic. Should we save it? It's kind of cool. You want to save it? We could do that. Yeah. 